everyone, it's I Talk Apple. I'm really, really sorry for not making a video in a couple of weeks, but like I said before, school is in session, so I'm really busy with homework and stuff. So whenever I make a video, just be happy that I made a video. As you can tell from the title, today's video is kind of a Safari customization tutorial. So I have Safari open here, and this is complete default so when you first open up Safari if you haven't done anything to it besides like bookmarks this is what it's going to look like. So I'm going to start with going over the preferences like I always do with these tutorials. So you have different tabs like general so you can change your home page, what new tabs open with. So in Safari 4 there's a new feature called top sites which I'll show you if I just open a new tab. Here's top sites and you can also edit your top sites by clicking the edit button, change how many sites are displayed, and it's a useful feature for some people, for some people not so much, so you can always change those in the preferences. I change your home page like I said. Then there's appearance options, bookmarks options, just a bunch of options because they're preferences. I'm not going to go over them because they're pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so now going over the window itself, um, this whole thing's the window. Um, at the top here is your toolbar. So you have navigation, like back and forward. This is to add a bookmark for the current page. So if I click the plus button, it'll add a bookmark for the current page. And it'll ask me if I'm sure because there's a Google search option already over there. But And then you can choose like a folder to put it in within your bookmarks bar if you have folders. Um, then this thing's the address bar. There's a refresh button right here. And you'll see the little loading comes up really fast. And then there's the Google search option. You can see your recent searches by clicking on this little carrot. And when you type, it will give you suggestions. So that's the toolbar. But let's say you want to add other things into the toolbar that aren't already there. All you have to do is right click, click customize toolbar, and you can drag certain individual buttons into the toolbar. So I really like to have a home button right here because my home page is YouTube and I go to YouTube a lot and clicking the home button will make it really easy to get there. And there's other buttons like print, downloads, and you can just add whatever you want. So the next part of the window is underneath the toolbar is the bookmarks bar. So these are where all your bookmarks are stored. Well, not all of them, just ones that you want to be stored here. Um, this book button is actually all your bookmarks, so you can visit your history through here, but then also bookmarks bar, bookmarks menu, which I don't really have anything in, and some other things. Then you can add bookmarks, like this Mac folder here, that aren't actually displayed in the bookmarks bar. Something useful, though, with the bookmarks bar is this little auto click option. So I have a folder called daily sites with sites that I visit every day. And if I click this auto click checkbox, instead of the little carrot next to the daily sites option, there's a little uh, square. So if I click this, all the sites in the daily sites will load at once in new tabs. And this is useful if you do have a group of sites that you like to visit right when you open up your browser. But you don't necessarily have to have the auto click option on to open all the sites at once. Another thing you can do is turn the auto click off, but hold command when you click the daily sites button, and it'll open up everything in that folder as well. And while I'm there, folders are a really great way to organize your bookmarks bar because you will eventually run out of room for all your bookmarks. Like the window only gets so big. So the folders are really useful. To add a new folder for a bookmark, just go to your little bookmarks button and make sure you're on the bookmarks bar if you want the folder to, to be displayed in the bar. Click the plus button at the bottom and there's your new folder. So then whenever you add a new bookmark, you can choose to add it to that folder. If you have several tabs open, you'll notice that the tabs are displayed right below the bookmarks bar. So this is where I'm actually going to start, you know, showing you how to customize stuff. Because with Safari, you can actually customize what color these tabs are, like the active tab. Let's say you have multiple tabs open in Safari, 
and I'm on the Google tab right now you'll notice it's a different color than the other two tabs because it's my active tab you can actually change the color of the active tab by going into the resources and changing the color in a photo editing application so that's what I'm going to show you how to do first thing you're going to want to do is open a finder window go to your applications folder and find Safari So here's Safari um, I recommend opening another finder window, command N or file new window, and going to your documents and creating a new folder called app backup or something, and then just copy Safari and paste it into the app backup folder. That way, if you want Safari like it was before, you'll have it there so nothing's messed up. Another thing you can do, which is what I've done, is make a folder somewhere like your desktop, which I have here. Uh, Safari resource backup. All you have to do is right click Safari, go to show package contents, click contents, resources. These are a bunch of images and there are certain images that we want to copy and paste into a new folder. So create a new folder by right clicking new folder or file new folder and call it Safari mod. You're going to need to put uh, three files in the Safari mod folder. So in resources, look for AW active tab fill. Then right below that is AW active tab left cap. And then there's active tab right cap. So click active tab fill, hold command, click left cap, keep holding down command, and click right cap. Then just copy those and paste them into your Safari mod folder. And you can also make a backup of these, um, like I said, the Safari resource backup. So I have those in there. And once you're in your Safari mod folder, select the images and right click, go to open with and open with Photoshop. If you have Photoshop, any image application, any image editing application works as long as you can change the hue of it of an image but Photoshop works best because then you can do some nice gradients and make it look nicer so if this little thing comes up embedded profile mismatch just keep clicking OK now I have all my um, files but they're really tiny so I'm gonna zoom into 2000 percent for each and once you're zoomed in um, just if you're using CS4 drag all the tabs out because you'll probably want to see them all at once. So just to give you an idea, this is like what a tab would look like. Here's the left edge, here's the middle, and here's the right corner edge. So now open up a Safari window, hold down Command, Shift, and 4 so you can take a screenshot and just take it of the top part of the window and drag your screenshot into the Photoshop icon to open it in Photoshop. So what we're going to want to do is click any one of these images, it doesn't matter, I'll just use active tab left cap, and I'm going to double click on the layer and go to gradient overlay. So I'm going to make this gradient, um, click on the white, and with the little eyedropper tool, go to the screenshot that you had of the Safari window with the tabs. And go like right where the bookmarks bar is kind of and use that color. That way it'll blend nicely. And then you can add another swat, um, you can add another one of these things and get a color a little below. And then you can change the black color to any color that you want. So I'm going to use a blue. It's all personal preference, it doesn't really matter. And then you're going to want to lower the opacity a little bit, say like 75-ish, and click OK. That's all you have to do. And now you'll notice if you go back to your little layers palette that there's a little FX thing. Hold down Option and drag and click the FX. And that will drag, well, that will copy the layer effects to both images.
so now all the images have the same effect to them. And that's actually all you really have to do. Just file, save, and make sure you save it as the same name. Save it as a PNG file, and it'll probably try to call it a copy. Just delete the copy. It has to be called AW space active tab left cap for the left one. Click replace, and you can close that. It'll ask if you want to save it. Click don't save. Photoshop's just weird like that. And do that for each one of the images except for the screenshot. So now you can quit Photoshop. Don't save any changes. So now we're done making the changes. All you have to do is go back to the Safari application, right click, show package contents, and open up resources. Now open up your Safari mod folder and select all the images and just drag them into the resources. It'll say the items can't be modified because resources can't be modified and click authenticate. It'll ask for an administrator name and password. And then it will say that the files already exist. Just click replace, replace, replace. And just if Safari is open, quit it and then open it up again. So here's Safari. You don't notice anything different right now. But if I open a new tab, you'll notice that it looks really bad because I did a bad job, but uh, you'll notice that it's blue. So that's a way to change the color of your active tab. I recommend not using such a bright color like this. Um, a duller one, or lower the opacity a lot more, that would work better. But that's what it looks like, just a basic idea. Next thing I'm going to show you how to modify is the actual loading bar. So if I go to youtube.com slash italkapple loading, uh, you can actually change the image behind it. You can modify certain resources. I'll give you a link to a tutorial made by um, Mac OS X Tutorials 12, Matt Fisher. He has one on how to change it on his website, but there's actually someone made like a theme. I'm just going to show you that way. It's easier. So here it is. This guy made a mod, so it's like a matte um, blackish finish. So I'll give you a link to this, and you can download it. I have them right here. Here's all the files. You just drag them back into the Safari Resources folder, um, authenticate it, and you'll be good to go. Just once again, make sure that you back up all the files or make a copy of Safari before you do that so you'll have the original if, in case you wanted to ever switch back. I just want to say sorry for not responding to messages, emails, things like that. I've been really, really, really busy with school. And this week I'm actually going on a retreat with my school, so I won't be, like, I won't have any access to technology for a week. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.